This video isn't so much about an actual camera setting, but rather a technique that we're using whenever we're shooting a single shot HDR image. This technique is known as exposing to the right. In this video, we're going to discuss shooting single shot HDRs as well as this technique of exposing the right in complete detail. At this point, all of you should have a solid understanding that not every scene we approach is going to have a dynamic range broad enough to require the use of a bracketed HDR sequence. In these kind of scenes that have a more limited dynamic range, we're taking one single photo and we're compressing the entire tone range within that one single image. So basically we have all of our shadows and all of our highlights within one image. When we get back into post-production, we can decide whether we want to process it regularly or use a technique that we refer to as a single shot HDR. Single shot HDRs offer two main advantages over a bracketed HDR sequence. They also have one kind of critical disadvantage. Now the two advantages is that, well, number one, it's easier when we get into post-production because we only have one image to deal with. So it basically cuts our workflow down significantly. Number two, since we're not dealing with a bracketed sequence, we can shoot moving objects and basically not have to worry about ghosting or motion blur or anything. We can shoot one single shot with a fast moving object and get a single shot HDR out of it while freezing the subject entirely because we only have to use one shot. This wouldn't be possible with a bracketed sequence because in the bracketed sequence, that moving object will be moving through each frame and it's going to be at different points within each frame when it goes into processing. This causes the effect known as ghosting, which we will talk about in a little bit more depth later on. But either way, these two advantages are great advantages over a bracketed sequence, and it makes it very worthwhile to understand exactly when you can use a single shot HDR. Because in certain situations, when you know you can capture most, if not all of the tonal range within that one single shot, not only are you saving yourself time, you're also affording yourself additional options as far as freezing motion and not having to deal with ghosting, motion blur, and anything else. Now the largest disadvantage of a single shot HDR compared to a bracketed sequence should be pretty obvious to you, which is we're limited in dynamic range to the actual DSLR body itself. Meaning if your DSLR can capture a 12 stop dynamic range with one single image, that is the entire dynamic range you can capture. Any scenes that have a dynamic range broader than 12 stops, well, couldn't be captured within a single image. That means that if we have a nicer DSLR, we're going to get better single shot HDRs versus if we have a DSLR that's not as nice that maybe only captures 10 stops, 12 stops compared to something like a full professional DSLR like a D800 that can capture 14 stops. Okay, so it's all going to come down to the DSLR body itself as being the capability when you're shooting a single shot HDR. In shooting a single shot HDR, the exposure becomes absolutely critical. A single shot HDR that's not exposed correctly is not going to turn out at all in post-production. So we use a technique that we refer to as exposing to the right. And this is one technique that's discussed frequently on the internet, but it's probably also one of the most misunderstood techniques out there. Now, most people interpret exposing to the right, meaning that you are basically exposing to the right of the histogram or the meter, meaning you're overexposing your image. That's not necessarily the case. Whether the image looks overexposed or whether it looks underexposed, this is all going to depend on the scene itself. If you have a certain type of look in the scene or if there's a super bright scene, it's going to look different with this technique than if you're shooting a darker scene or one that has a mixture and a broader dynamic range. So whether the scene looks under or overexposed doesn't have anything to do with whether you have correctly exposed to the right. What exposing to the right means that basically we are taking the image and we're adjusting the exposure so that the entire tonal range is shifted to the right of the histogram. We're pushing the highlights all the way to the right, but not to the point where they're blown out. So they're basically bordering the right side of the, the histogram, but we still have the majority of our highlight detail retained. At the same time, on the shadow side of the histogram, we haven't clipped our shadows, meaning that the shadows are meeting the edge but they haven't gone beyond and we're not losing detail in our shadows. Whenever you are exposing to the right, you're always better off 
blowing out more of your highlights than clipping more of your shadows. If you're clipping shadows, what's going to happen is when you try and bring out that detail, you're going to get a very, very kind of nasty noise and grain and detail in those dark areas of the image. Your dark shadows might turn green. You're going to have artifacting. You're going to have all sorts of problems over there. As opposed to on the other side, if you blow out some of your highlights, generally we can recover highlights a little bit easier. And in addition, it's going to look more natural with highlights slightly blown out than with shadows clipped. So if you're in a situation where the dynamic range is broader than what can be captured in your single shot, but you have no other choice than to shoot a single shot HDR, then what you're going to do is expose so that your shadows are basically touching the left side of the, of the histogram, but not being clipped. And then from there, you are retaining as much highlights as possible, but you will inevitably blow out some highlights. That's okay. You'll get a cleaner looking image with this effect. Now, once again, whether the scene is going to look overexposed or underexposed is really just going to depend on that scene. But in either situation, as long as your highlights are pushed to the right, you've retained your shadows and all that detail is within one single image, you have correctly exposed to the right. We're going to be going through quite a few examples when we get to the post-processing section of this DVD. We have several single shot HDRs that we're going to work through. But for now, just to help kind of ingrain this whole process into your head, let's show you guys a few examples. In this histogram, we can see that there's a significant amount of shadows that are clipped. This would be referred to as exposing to the left. We're going to run into the issues when we basically try and bring out the detail in the shadows where those details don't actually exist. We're going to get a lot of noise, a lot of artifacting, a lot of color noise, and all sorts of things that just aren't going to look good. In this next histogram, it shows that there's a significant amount of highlights that are blown. Basically, we've exposed too far to the right. Now, in this image, we're going to run into issues when we try to recover details in the highlights. We can also see that we've lost too much contrast. The shadows aren't going to look like shadows. And basically, we've just lost too much detail in our midtone highlights in our highlight area. This final histogram shows a correct exposure based on the exposing to the right technique. Now, as you can see, the image is pushed to the right, showing that it's a bit overexposed, but not to the point that the highlights have been blown. We can see that the entire tonal range in the histogram is captured within a single shot. And we can notice that if we go into the develop module, turn on our highlight alert, we can actually see that we haven't really blown or clipped much detail in this shot. With shots like this, we can process them as a single shot bracketed HDR or as a single shot faux HDR. And we're going to talk to you about that more a little bit later. So for now, remember when you're attempting to shoot a single shot HDR, you need to expose to the right, push the highlights in your frame all the way to the right side of the histogram, retaining as much highlights as possible while not clipping any of your shadows. Typically a histogram that's basically like this in a correctly shot single shot HDR that's been exposed to the right is going to look kind of like a U shaped where you have a little spike right in the highlights and then it dips in the midtones and you have a little spike right in the shadows. That's typically going to be the look, but uh, it could vary just again, depending on the scene. Let's go on. Like we said, we're going to go over several examples of this in the post-processing section, which will really help ingrain this in your head even further. So let's move to the next video at this point.